This planetary crust is making me thirsty. This planetary crust is making me thirsty. This planetary crust is making me thirsty! Hey everybody, welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and uh, salinize the Star Wars movies one minute at a time. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. And I'm Liz Whitaker from the Star Wars Minute Listener Society on Facebook.com. That's right, StarWarsMinute.com slash Facebook. You can get there and, and you'll find Liz there, you'll find me there, you won't find Alex there. But it's mm-hmm. okay. We have a good time over there now. Now that Alex better is gone. Than... Now. Yeah. <laughs> now that. Um, every time I come in, everyone's just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nothing. No, they're not doing anything. Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. <laughs> Hide the memes. Amazing. Hide the memes. <laughs> um, but today we're ta- we are having fun. We're having. We're going to talk about minute one hundred and twenty of uh, Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. It's two the, hour mark. The two hours of this movie. And there's still a lot to go. Um, 120 starts with Long the uh, the resistance troops getting ready Long at the time. ridge, the Red Ridge. Resistance, resistance troops at the Red Ridge. Resistance troops at the Red Ridge. <laughs> They're getting ready. Resistance troops are getting ready at the Red Ridge, and uh, it ends with Poe telling everybody to keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it tight, keep it po. tight. Mm-hmm. That's his CB lingo. He's like, you got your ears on, breaker, breaker. Here comes Smokey. Smokey. Um, here comes Salty. Here comes Snokey. Um, but yes, we get we start with the uh, first of all. I, I love the visual. We talked a little bit about the crystals um, yesterday, and just the we really see it for real here. With I think it's Major Emmett is out, steps up and is walking mm-hmm. on the surface, and we see his footprints are red underneath because there's crystals underneath salt flakes. And I mm-hmm. love the visuals of it. I love the whole conceit of it. Uh, it's terrific. This is maybe my favorite visual minute of the whole movie. Hmm. Hmm. Why is that? I love the everything they do with the red crystals under the salt. Mm-hmm. Every way they exploit that for visual pleasure is mm-hmm. I fully support. I think it's amazing. Yeah. I had this concept for this uh so every year at uh san diego comic-con uh ahsoka tano herself has a fashion show for like nerd fashion Mm -hmm. and you can like it amateur designers can submit entries and i had this grand idea of making a dress that was like white brocade and the skirt had like it was like a full 60s skirt and there were little zippers with little motors on them and they would move up the skirt and a red Ooh. like red chiffon would fall out wow. to like recreate this whole look nice oh my gosh uh, do it. yeah and then and then i think i got uh, something i submitted for work got selected at a national conference and i was like oh i won't be available to <laughs> present this real so. life there it goes it's tragic yeah it's i can't tragic. even submit it yeah, yeah. well oh, well there's still time also i didn't know how to sew th- at the time so oh, okay that would have been a sl- <laughs> would have been a slight impediment but you say at the time but now since you then do. you've learned i do know how to sew now there yeah. you go so that's step one you were you you're closer to it than you were before I did buy a sewing machine in order to make that dress, mm. and then it didn't happen, but I did learn mm. to sew. All right. Taking your first step into a larger sewing machine. We do also see the, <laughs> we do also see the quadnoculars at last. Here we that, go. At here long we last. See and it's the, Emmett, the, right? The, Emmett's got the quadnoculars. Yes. All right. yes. Uh, I hope it's like uh, razor blades where they just keep adding more and more uh, bla- you know, sept, sept, uh, septoculars, or mm. you know, I guess it would have to be an even mm. number, right? It doesn't have to be. You can put one in the middle. Well, that's true. This three E's. Yeah, or three E's has a hard I'm time sure, getting, but trinoculars. Surely there's some being in this galaxy far, far away that has an odd number of ocular inputs in there. You would think, yeah. Anatomy. Yeah. 
yeah, the, the um, what is he, a Gand? The Reyes and Mahonic and uh, Ainley team. The, the Right. I, I think... Th- yeah, they is that, are they Gand? They Gand? I'm getting them confused. Or Grand. They're Grand. Gand is is uh is the bug thing. Yeah, yes. yeah. Gand finds him is or Gran. It's, it's so confusing. What is you got your, um, you your Gran, your Gans, and your Godels? Exactly. <laughs> what is Feldeprin? Fel- Feldeprin is, Feldeprin is a Godel. What? Your Feldeprin is a Godel. Godel. Feldeprin is a Godel. Feldeprin is a Godel. Mares eat oats and nose eat oats, and Feldeprin is a Godel. Um. <laughs> The uh, I, my next note is taste the planet because <laughs> <laughs> yes the uh, the uh, soldier doing the tasting mm-hmm. is named Sergeant Salty Sharp. Nah. His nickname, yeah. and I don't know if they called him that before this, and that was like he always goes around and he's like oh, salt. That's his nickname now. <laughs> I think that's his nickname the, now. Yeah, I think that's what got him the nickname. Got yeah, it. Gareth Edwards yeah. over there was like. Yeah. Oh man, salty <laughs> over here. Well, here's some. I know this. This scene gets a lot of. Uh, it gets people. It's it's a noteworthy scene because of you know taste. You don't really see taste. Rarely comes up in science fiction type movies. You know, mm-hmm. we're always asking what places smell like. But I, even I've never asked what you know Tatooine tastes like. Yeah. Um. Maybe but apparently, delicious. uh, geophysicist Mika McKinnon took to Twitter. And said that, as far as she was concerned, that scene of him tasting the the uh, salt was bordering in geo fan service because apparently geologists all the time lick rocks mm. just because it's. Rock, it, I, I it, think that distinct types of rocks have a distinct yeah. flavor, and it's a quick way where you can say, "Oh no, that's salt" or whatever. So right. to her and other geophysicists, that they're, 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 seeing someone do that was such a like an inside baseball type move that hmm. they uh, they they uh, they applauded it. So um, what so about one for like, Ryan Johnson? Wait, what if you lick coal? Does that t- I'm trying to get the coal <laughs> miners back on. <laughs> what does that taste like? That, I'm assuming that wouldn't be a Death? good taste, but tastes like the future to me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, um, salty sharp. Um, so, Sergeant Salty Sharp. He's doomed to have to have an S name because mm-hmm. it's S rank, so he's gonna be stuck as sergeant forever. Sergeant Salty. Did you? Yeah, he's got his. <laughs> it's his pretzel company back home. Um, did you? Did you have behind the scenes info on him? Because no, that is uh, key assistant second director Matthew Sharp. Assistant to the second oh. director. Key assistant second <laughs> director. I don't know what the, like, there's there's a lot of, you know, variables there. There's a lot of uh, modifiers. But, mm-hmm. yeah, Matthew Sharp. Um, and it was apparently in the credits he's listed as salty, which is why oh. they had to incorporate that. Mm. They're like, all right, well, in the credits he's listed as salty. Therefore, that's canonical. Yeah. <laughs> so um, then, they're, they're, all right, that's his nickname, and he's Lieutenant or Sergeant Sharp. Did you say Sergeant Sharp? Sergeant Sergeant, Sergeant Salty Sharp. Sharp. Sergeant Salty yeah. Sharp. Yeah. <laughs> salty you know, Sharp. The do, only do, rank do, he do, could do, move to is Supreme Leader. Yeah, that's he right. right to From the there, top. that he doesn't know. Yeah. It's like one of those things. It's like, well, like it's like King Ralph. Like, the, oh, we everybody died on the ship, and this guy, this guy, Salty Sharp is the new Supreme Leader, but he doesn't know yet. They got to get him a message. Mm. Did Snoke? Do you think Snoke had like a will and was like, uh, did he? Uh, like was it, I guess we should have talked about this a couple of days ago, but like mm. well, we you think that he would appoint a successor in his political documents or whatever. Mm. But well, that that seems guess. to me like you know evacuate in our moment of triumph. It's like why would Got I need it. to designate a successor? Yeah. I'm yeah, it's I'm gonna be fine. Gonna be in control for years. I, if I'm I, gone, that's because everything's over. My Snoke theory sucks, is what you're telling me. Yeah, basically. All right, mm-hmm. I get it. Uh, I do have some more behind the scenes stuff about they filmed these scenes in Bolivia. The mm. scenes, uh, oh. the uh, Solar di, I don't know how to pronounce this, U Y U N I. U Uiani? Uiani. Hmm. Uh, anyway, it's the largest salt flats on the entire planet Earth. So they picked a good location. It always it always strikes me as weird when they do stuff like that. Like they, they went to Norway to film The Empire Strikes Back, like snow scenes, where it seems like you easily could have just done this like it's just like the guy sitting there in trenches, right? What? Well, like how need... much of it was was? Um, 
I mean, they get a lot of like. I guess with Luke's out there, like did they Mark Hamill go out, out there? And yeah, stuff I mean, like they this? have a whole fight scene on the yeah. salt flats, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, it, it's. I, I'm, I'm amazed now that that's a real. I hadn't even thought like like my mind had not even processed that they had to film this somewhere. That, that's how engaged yeah, I assumed in this movie it was I like was. It was like I, I don't assumed know, it this... was, you know, in Utah or something. No, but um, that's but incredible. then again, that's totally the Last Jedi building two million dollar uh, yeah. sea siren puppets, building giant Just elaborate sets they the only globe. use for one for one shot. You know, it's so it's it's. Uh, on but brand. there's not really it's not red underneath, right? That that part was a. I assume that 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 was was made up right that they had they had to paint the whole salt flats <laughs> red and then they recover it with it salt all with red, red food coloring <laughs> uh, um yeah yes, apparently uh it was a lake at one point in prehistoric times it dried out leaving behind 10 billion tons of salt wow so uh if you need any salt get yourself to bolivia my friend make sure it's the salt you're getting because <laughs> um, oh Hang on. Uh-oh. Blizz is being handed an update. No. Nope. No. Oh, also no. Okay. It actually says, I thought I was I was reading a sentence in like Google search results fashion, and it said, that bright red coloration is only visible when the glittering surface is disturbed. The sentence literally says, Crate does have one dramatic flourish that distinguishes oh, it yeah. from... It's Crate. <laughs> yeah. It's Crate. <laughs> um, well, that's neat. I, I I'm I'm amazed that it it uh, I literally I I did not think that it was filmed anywhere like I was I was so yeah. sucked into the movie that I was just like yeah no they they went to a planet and filmed they're, this just happened they're in crate yeah they're in crate I found I, it on a listicle about thirty locations where you can see where they filmed Star Wars hmm. and Pete I know you've been to at least one two? I've been to hmm. You went to Guatemala, right? AKA Yavin Four. I feel like I had been to more, but now I can't remember. So I know when you were in Italy, but did you actually get to the Phantom we, Menace locations, or no. you just drove by it? We had to drive by Naboo because yeah. uh, there was Ella was pregnant with DTR, yeah. so uh, she was not having any stops for me to be like, "But the Phantom Menace, <laughs> <laughs> but the columns, I saw those columns, yeah. and no, uh, no redwoods, even though you, when you go up, oh to, no, yeah, uh, redwoods, but not not the specific like you know the lo- locations. I haven't been to the exact you know GPS coordinates for that, but definitely right. been up into the redwoods, uh, into those towns right. that were the uh, yeah. Remember the uh, apparently during the making of uh, they had to where they kept all the. The the Ewoks, the, the little Ewoks. people playing the Ewoks, they sent them to over the border into uh, into <laughs> Oregon, mm. uh, because they were notoriously uh, hard partiers and uh, uh, disturbing. They came potential from the disturbances. Eggs. So they, they were having those Lando type parties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they 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 bust them over to Brookings, I think. So, uh, um, I feel like there's another location though. Well, it, it's Liz? on my list now to go to um, the uh, Bolivia. To well, Bolivia, but uh, to go to um, you know, the Death Valley locations are not far mm-hmm. from it, it's only you know, a, a, a less than a day's drive from here. So, I, yeah. I keep meaning to do that, I have not. Hmm. Liz, you've been in any Star Wars locations that you were aware of? Have you been to no, any film think... locations that are that you're aware of? i I mean, other than like Santa Monica Pier. Hmm. That's in like a hundred movies. Yeah, that's true. I can't think of any off the top of my Times head. Square. I've been to Times Square. Can anyone there else make that claim? <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone else ever been there? Um, now I'm looking at a. Li- I'm the Wikipedia. Wikipedia. We're not not Wikipedia. We're in the, we're in the real world now. Wikipedia wow. list of Star Wars filming locations, and I don't. This um, is real canon. Right. Yeah. I, I don't see any of. Uh, um. Any other places that I've been? Um, several ones uh, in in. Oh, I guess at the time they weren't. But a lot of places, a couple of places in Italy, mm-hmm. but some of them are from. I guess they filmed some stuff from Solo in Italy. Um, so, I'll go to not right now, but I'll go to Death Valley soon to to add on to my uh, my scenes, and then maybe we'll go out to. Uh, uh, Alex, you come down. We'll drive out to uh, um, 
Do a live show, Death we'll, Valley. We'll get Tony Consiglio, and we'll go to Yuma, Arizona, and go to uh, where the job, the Great Pit of Carcoon. Oh, awesome! So, that's still go. there. The Great Pit of I don't think so, but the the uh, the you know, it's the desert. It's always shifting. Yeah, can't trust that thing. Yeah. Uh, you know what else you can't trust is the V4XD ski speeders. Mm. That is the the um, spaceships, the, the spaceships, I guess, land ships. The land see. ships. We see our heroes um, chugging along in, in this minute. Yeah. Um, I don't like that they, they're driving around with their windows open. That seems unprofessional seems and dangerous. Really windy. Well, but yeah. they're not, like, flying. They're just, you know... But it's They're like skimming. driving around in a car. It's it's or you know. like on a motorcycle. Usually people have goggles on. Yeah. Because you know the wind in your eyes. Yeah. But plus it's like guess... debris flying. You know, you got ships crashing into each other. Debris. Mm-hmm. So my guess is that like probably most of these uh, are so old and decrepit that the mechanism by which that Could even window close would close anyway. yeah. is just geared. It's just all jammed up with salt crystals. Yeah. But I feel yeah. like Poe should at least be wearing goggles. But maybe you wouldn't recognize him then. So yeah, he's too he cool for goggles. Recognize him with his red goggles. <laughs> that would have that would have been a more valuable lesson is to learn the safety of wearing goggles. That would have right. been a more important lesson for. for I want to see him like Snoopy in the Red Baron <laughs> Snoopy with like oh, goggles totally. and, a, and a scarf flying <laughs> behind him. <laughs> see, it's always and there's it's... this Woodstock on the. <laughs> It's a fine line between like what would we would we not recognize him versus can we sell an action figure of that? Because then I think mm. you know mm. Poe with his yeah. with his goggles and Red Baron scarf would totally be that's yeah. a special edition Funko mm-hmm. Pop. Yeah, I know where it's it's two years away, but I hope there's a lot of Easter eggs in that Rise of Skywalker scene where they show all the ships all the arriving for Lando's party, mm-hmm. and mm. then like they they could have had Snoopy on his little doghouse mm. as one of the oh, uh, yeah. know, things there in the background. But. I thought you were going to talk about Poe's fancy scarf in that movie, but we'll get there. Oh no, that too. Yeah, <laughs> that too. Oh, he does get a scarf, doesn't mm-hmm. he? Yeah, he's closer. Does it ever flap in the wind? Mm. Well, I don't, mm. we'll find You'll out. You'll have to tell two me years. in two years. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, have to, we'll have you back for a scarf minute. <laughs> scarf I do enjoy minute. picking. I do enjoy picking uh, minutes that I guessed on based on fashion. Yeah. <laughs> Any other fashions to... in the film that you uh, re- there highlights for you in this movie? Kind of Canto Bite has a lot of a uh, lot of. I mean, awesome costumes. There's, there's Snoke's robe. Mm-hmm. Right. Leia's mm-hmm. jacket. Holdo's dress and like Halo thing. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's see. I, I really like Finn in the uh, imperial blue coat he still has on now. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, those are probably the highlights. I think he should keep that. Not that it doesn't matter now, but I think he should have kept it as the like a symbol coat. of his. Like, right. yeah. Like, yeah. I'm a former first, first, uh, first order guy, mm-hmm. you know, but customize it. So Reclaim it, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, you, you know, go. stick some pins on it or whatever, like yeah. enamel pins. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The way his that, favorite shows. Down like of, with the first order pins, yeah. something like that. The way that punks and hippies would ironically wear a lot of military surplus stuff. Yeah, there you go. Right. Perfect. But was, so he just goes back to wearing a, a Poe jacket, right? Um, I think he gets his own jacket. I don't know. Hmm. Well, we'll find out that in two years, too. Yeah. We'll find that out sooner. He pops up before the... Yeah. I don't know, probably around the same time as the scarf. My yeah. guess is that, like, that jacket should could be like his special occasion jacket, but I feel like there's a reason it's an officer's jacket, mm. and it's yeah. because you know they're giving directions, not doing yeah. as much of the jumping around, you know, getting shot at action. So you think if they had like a medal ceremony scene at the end of Rise of that Skywalker, be, yes. he would wear the he could wear that jacket, first order jacket, and wow. maybe also borrow some of Han's pants out of the Falcon. Han's pants. <clears throat> Han's pants. <laughs> um. All of this talk just reminds me that I should indeed have bought that first order coat at Galaxy's Edge. But one hundred percent, maybe I'm maybe one day. Sure, I'm sure it'll. I'm sure they still have them. I don't know. It was like a, there was like a sale or something that day too. It was totally like the signs were all pointing to like I should get this jacket, mm, and yeah. then um, I didn't. It would have been interesting because you know <clears throat> I, the one way I could see symbolically why you wouldn't want him wearing a first order jacket is because he was not. You know, it's like right. You know, he wouldn't have positive associations with it. Oh, but, wait, so, Finn or me? 
Finn. Okay. No, you you have very positive associations with him, but <laughs> sure. But like, so in the first one, he's wearing Poe's jacket, and you know that's someone else's identity, and then he's wearing this jacket. No, that's someone else's. Like, so in the Rise mm. of Skywalker, he wears a new one, and it'd be like a hideously this ugly fits thing. Just with, right. With no, you know, like like he had no taste whatsoever, and it, people would be like, oh, you know, it's like a like a. I want to see him in. Uh... The jacket Rocky wears in Rocky Two with the tiger on the back. Oh, totally. Yeah, there you go. He can have a tiger. <laughs> he can um, borrow one. He can borrow it from me. Yeah. <laughs> have a neck suit on the back. <laughs> or like a like a short. I'm thinking like a like a Brett the Hitman Hart kind of jacket, like a short leather jacket with like wide shoulders mm-hmm. and like a like a, a flap front. Hmm. Maybe some kind of plaid. Sure, he could he could go plaid. Oh, hmm. yeah. Do have we? Do they have plaid in Star I Wars? That's what I was just thinking. Has anybody huh. worn plaid? Did the original Jabba wear plaid? I know you think he might, but I don't <laughs> think he did. I think he was wearing just kind of dirty street clothes. I guess the patterns we see tend to be unique to Star Wars, or they're like yeah, hmm. like you don't see like houndstooth or even yeah. There's checkers, not a lot I don't of think. texture just... like well, yeah. They don't have a lot of patterns. Like stripes even. Can't think of anyone who even has striped clothes. Uh, Houndstooth is Dengar's ship, is it not? Uh, Bosk's ship. Bosk's ship. There you go. Is the so, Houndstooth. Yeah. Um, terrible name. But, uh, Dengar's ship is the Outrider. Just. Yeah. Wait, that's Dash you know, Rendar's ship. Oh, that's Dash Rendar. Oh. You're right. See, Dash Rendar, Dengar. You think it's the same guy? <laughs> <laughs> Have I been, co- I think they're the same guy in my mind. You, you I think they've always something. been the same. Oh. You've unlocked the key of Dengar. Mm. Mm. Or Payback, that's what I call him. <laughs> that, was, that was his nickname in some uh, expanded universe story, right? Uh, payback? Could be. Probably. Yeah. And now, so anyway. we're all like... Wait, which like, one? Dengar or Dengar. Dengar. Dengar? It's the same guy. <laughs> yeah, it's the same guy. It's the guy. same guy. <laughs> he, once he gets the bandages, he goes from Dash Rendar to Dengar. That's mm. why he, it's It was the together. brand of bandage he used. Mm. That's yeah. where he got that name. <laughs> It's like, he's like, who are you? He's like, Dengar. <laughs> I think he said Dengar. <laughs> there you go. Um, going back to the uh, the skimmers for a second and going back to the doors. And the big ass door has the little mini doors. Doors on doors on doors. Doors on yeah. doors on doors. Um, it's doors all, the whole planet is one big door. <laughs> <laughs> the whole door is one big door. Big door. Not much there. Um, yeah, I love the way that the skimmers get spit out. Like they each have their own yeah. little garage door. Up on the on the giant door like an there. advent calendar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I think that would be. I feel like that would be um, very unsettling, though. Is if you're if you're in it, and then it's it's almost like you're going on a roller coaster, but there's no track. All of a sudden, you're just like right. free in free fall, especially in those old junky spaceships. Yeah, like, do they the live fall. up there? <laughs> How do they get up there? Do the, do those ski speeders live up there? Did they have to climb yeah. up a ladder? I'm assuming that's where they were all stored. So, so instead of like when they come back, they have to go. They maybe go back into some elevator behind the <laughs> behind the like wall a chairlift, or, or yeah, mm-hmm. it's just yeah. ropes and pulleys. They have to be like, okay, whoa. <laughs> oh, C three PO is over there pulling on the. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do now want to see like what if somebody's skimmer wasn't working and they just like it was working. You know the the thrust was working but the lift wasn't working so it just gets spat out the door and just straight down well, that's, like, that's like what happens to basically um, Finn Maul uh, basically, yeah. in Darth Maul oh. in uh, in the Phantom Menace he goes shooting off that cliff and then he just drops down oh yeah so uh, he's uh, he does that but mm. I don't know these ships I would be very uh, these ships I'd be uh, antsy yeah mm. you came here in that thing exactly <laughs> and it's like oh, 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 oh. like Han Solo just in, in Docking Bay 94. Just like a little <laughs> ski thing. I do like, Engage your um, mono ski, you sweet trash man. Like, <laughs> just get it together. That's right. That is in this thing where she's telling him how to drive it, right? Yeah. 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 Um, because she's technically minded and he is not. He's a, he's a big And he doof of knows how to run trooper. a garbage compactor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's the but, same uh, principle. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you? I I have a distinct memory, and I feel like this doesn't happen much. I feel like it was more of a thing a long time ago, not in a galaxy far, far away. But like I, I specifically remember when I was a kid that like my uncle had a car that had a hole in the floor. 
And it was like there was like a piece of newspaper, like a folded up newspaper that covered it for the most part until it got fixed. I feel like I have experience. I have definitely that. I've been in cars like that. Okay. Yeah. So it is a thing. It's just not my my cars don't have holes, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't think your uncle probably yeah. bought it that way. I don't yeah. think they were marketed. No. No, yeah, was... as Flintstone cars. He did live in Bedrock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um Bedrock. The the um uh I, I have distinct memory of being a kid and kind of like seeing that that was a thing and it kind of like t- it kind of deflated the idea of a car like the sanctity of a car was was like no longer I'm like no well this is just a I'm just this a is t- just like a I'm bucket just a, I'm, I'm just in a metal a box can. <laughs> yeah like the, the car is magical I'm in a different thing when I'm in here but no there's just like a little it, it, the the street is right on the other side of that thing. Yeah. And so that has a little bit of that. This evoked that for me a little bit when he puts his foot through the thing. I'm like, well, no, it's like a spaceship is supposed to be like a magical container. You can't just put your foot through it. <laughs> right. Well, that's why this is a, a salt ship, not a spaceship. It's a salty ship. Right. Yeah. Mm. Hey, speaking of which, I can't believe we passed this by without mentioning it. But in that scene where he says, mm, salty, um, the soldier next to him is the um, poor doomed Gareth Edwards, director of Rogue One, uh, yeah, that... standing next to him. And he looks at him kind of like, what? You're licking rocks? <laughs> Don't get a peed on that. <laughs> uh, Liz said that, I think. Oh, did Gareth, you? She was like, did Gareth say... Edwards, give him a funny look. Oh, okay. Sorry. Some, I asked I was... something about it. No, that's okay, all right. Yeah. But it stuck in my mind because when you ask people, you know, what kind of role would you like? I want to yeah. be the Gareth Edwards character who Reacts. just gets to make a really over expressive facial Got it. move face acting mm-hmm. yeah so i don't get the chance to screw up a line mm-hmm. yeah but I, I make a face real big other, trying to get there are other characters in star wars who are like who don't i guess lobot doesn't talk but he just does silent reactions <laughs> but are there other characters who i guess in, in, in the original star wars i feel like some of those guys those imperial those rebel guys who are manning the comms kind of get little mm-hmm. showcase moments where they give skeptical looks right but um well that got me thinking like well then you you i feel like you harm your career on the convention circuit by not having a line that you can sign but yeah but if i have like a signature eyebrow then you can charge for photos where you can stand next to somebody and make your eyebrow face at them and uh, uh, just make a, like it's my default move to make a goofy face in a photo anyway right there, so, so it, why not make default. a career yeah. out of it yeah, yeah. get paid so you're yeah. saying you should walk around with a little kind of miniature set that you would you and the person would both crouch down behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would... We'd have like a just a hanging backdrop. Yeah, you know? totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you do like a yeah, that we get you know, there's it's like a photo booth, you get some props and I make a dumb yeah. face. Mm-hmm. Oh, imagine you, you like forty five dollars. Forty five. Imagine oh. you after like thirty oh. years on There's the road and you're all like scowling when you, you know, yeah. like they're all. Posing got, all happy I had to get my yourself. eyebrows <laughs> tattooed on my face because they all fell out. Like they're all gone. Yeah, you just there's like one permanently tattooed higher. But that's than the like other the one. yeah. But that's the key. You have to make it right. an eyebrow maneuver so that you can always like draw them back on. And then yeah. if your when your face can't move anymore, yeah, your eyebrows still looks right. And that way you could still walk among civilians and people wouldn't know who you are because you wouldn't be arching your eyebrows. So. Right. Exactly. But then when mm-hmm. you wanted to get a seat at the restaurant, you're like, oh, I'm sorry, do you know who I am? And they're like, no. And then uh, you arch your eyebrow and then like, mm, oh, it's right you. this way, madam. And so on. <laughs> that's the dream. That's um, it. Well, that's all I had for 120. Um, did you guys have anything else for 120? Liz, did you have anything for either 120 or the movie in general? Did you have a... I do love Poe's, oh, hell. Because, like, yeah. he's getting he's he's trying to hype everybody up. He's like, listen, guys, this is going to suck, but we're going to do it together. And then he's like, oh, I'm already with the extra suck. <laughs> like, Does he actually say hell? Yeah. Oh, hmm. Christian hell. He's, he's pretty oh, foul mouth, that hell. guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely the most potty mouth of the Star Wars yeah, characters, other a, than I mean, R2, of course. supposed to, like... Give him his edge. Yeah. Hmm. He's a bad boy. Yeah, he's a bad you think, boy. You think now he wouldn't be cursing now that he's learned his lesson about He's about not leadership. quite no, fully that, learned it yet. Mm, that's well, somewhere. and he's going to bring his bad boy edge to that new leadership oh, role. Refresh, that's right. refresh the brand. Yeah. Mm. This is this yeah, is not your a... grandfather's rebel leader. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, he's like a millennial 
lead in the workplace. Hmm. Yeah. Um, now, real quick, you uh, do you remember where you saw Last Jedi and and what your experience was? Yes, I saw it in Indianapolis twice on opening weekend. I probably saw. I think I saw like the seven o'clock show on Thursday night because that's a thing now. Mm-hmm. Um, at just a regular, the only ticket I could find at a regular, just like AMC theater in a mall. But Saturday, I got up at six o'clock in the morning to go downtown to the Indiana State Museum where they have a 15 story IMAX. Mm. What? And yeah, yeah, it's 15 pretty great. stories. I think that's right. I'm not great at numbers. That might that be an enormous. exaggeration. Yeah. It is indoors? one of only like. Out- outdoors? Indoors. Indoors. But it's one of only, I think, six screens that large in the world. Six IMAX Sheesh. screens that large in the world. Wow. So the only ticket I could get opening weekend for that was 645 Saturday morning. Oh, <laughs> it's boy. Six stories tall and 84 feet wide. The largest movie screen in okay. the state. Wow. It's still impressive. Still, well, yeah, Very six impressive. Six stories I mean, is still pretty tall. Yeah. Uh, six fifteen, same thing to me. It's close. Uh, uh, <laughs> so that was like seeing the Holdo maneuver on that screen oh, yeah. was yeah. amazing. And since it's only one screen, they turned the whole lobby into like Star Wars theme stuff. So like there was a light side and dark side entrance, and then they actually had a mini art show with local artists. So there was there's a local artist that. Um, made a bunch of stormtrooper helmets out of found materials. Mm. Um, and there were some ceramic Star Wars mugs. If you want to see photos of it, go to the listen- Star Wars Minute Listener Society and search for... Hmm. Hmm. I don't... You could search my name and it's one of my posts from 2017. There you go. Right. You just have to... But there are photos of it from that showing, and uh, that was a that was a really excellent experience. Sounds like a real event. Yeah, you know what you should do. You should find the post and then redirect, oh, like help people. Liz Whitaker dot X Y Z to that post. <laughs> there it is. Mm. Well, or just comment on the po- the original post, and that'll push it back to the top. But so that bubble way it, yeah, people... bump it. Yeah, yeah bump I could it, do that. As kids say, bump. Yeah. I can go through my own posts, so you don't have to. Well. That's why you're a hero to us, at least. <laughs> um, well, speaking of which, thanks for being a hero and uh, coming with us all this week uh, on, to talk about The Last Jedi. It's been fun. I'm glad I got to have the salty, salty minute. <laughs> the, um, now, between the two, I know it's, it's, you're, a, you're a big Star Wars fan, so I don't want to have to make you choose, but between the two... Solo, Last Je- the Rise of Skywalker. Which one did you like more, or which one do you feel more closer to, passionately about? Probably the Rise of Skywalker. Okay, because it has mostly because Babu Frick and Dio. Mm-hmm. Completely legitimate, understandable responses. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm get get you gotta get people on my team for Rise of Skywalker. So we'll see what. Uh, Dio um, kind of looks like it has a Woodstock kind of design. Oh, there you go. Uh, yes, Dio would make a great Woodstock. <laughs> so Poe with his scarf and Dio right there sitting yes. behind him. Yeah. <laughs> or on top of him. How does Woodstock sit? I don't think Woodstock is generally involved in, like, the, uh, hmm. in the- uh, the He's w- on the Robo top one. of the doghouse usually, I think. Hmm. Or right. I, I, Woodstock is a hairbrush to me. I had a Woodstock hairbrush hmm. when yeah. I was a kid. So that's Woodstock was ever, wherever hairbrushes go. I think he hangs out sometimes with uh, Snoopy on his doghouse, but I generally don't think Woodstock is involved in the uh, World the War Red One Baron thing. Ace part. Well, but you know, people there's will, a lot of peanuts, so I'm sure people will let us know now. They're going to send us all kinds yeah. of things with with Woodstock being involved in there. Yeah. Um, and uh, you can do that to well, hit us up on Twitter. We're at Star Wars Minute. To Instagram, we're at the Star Wars Minute. Uh, Facebook. StarWarsMinute.com slash Facebook will take you to the Star Wars Minute Listener Society, where Liz will politely bump her post. And um, then uh, find us all those places 
Meet us back here on Monday for a brand new episode of Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute.